Hi, this is Mike with TFP TV, and this is the FN 1922. What on earth is that? This is actually a really successful pistol, despite it being really very meh, and uh, practically no one ever having heard of it. Now, uh, the background to this is that in the aftermath of the First World War, the Austro-Hungarian Empire was broken up, the Kingdom of uh, Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, better known as Yugoslavia, broke off, needed guns. They went to FN in Belgium and said, we need guns. We want a 9mm, don't really care what flavour of 9mm, um, 8 shots, and it must be cheap because we've got no money. So uh, FN scratched their heads, and uh, what they'd been making previously, and I've shown this uh, earlier on TFB, this is the uh, FN 1903, this particular one is a Swedish M07 pistol. Um, bit too expensive. Yeah. Not really, uh, not really affordable for us, but uh, you've got this. We rather like this. This is an FN 1910, and again, I've shown this on the channel. This is in fact one of the first uh, guns I showed on this channel. It's a really delightful little striker fire pocket pistol that points really well, and uh, it's not particularly accurate, but uh, it points quite well. It's quite a delightful little thing, but as a service pistol, as a main service pistol, it's tiny. It's a pocket pistol. Uh, one of these in 9mm short, this one's a 32, 9mm uh, short, they're a bit on the lively side. So uh, the Belgian boffins put their heads together and thought, okay, these guys, they want a new gun, but they haven't really got the money to um, pay for R&D, they don't want the 1903, so um, I know, we'll make this bigger. But not just, I mean, not bigger in the way that the FN 1903 is an entirely scaled up Colt 1903. Now, we'll make it longer and deeper. Then the R&D costs are minimal and we can even share tooling on a lot of it. All, this, all the small parts, all the internal parts are the same. Um, yeah, let's do that. How can we do this as cheaply as possible? Do we need to make a whole slide? No, we don't. This is what's really cunning about this, okay? Um, this particular little one, there's a little bushing on the end, you press and turn it, it's kind of stiff because it's got the uh, the full mainspring on it and it's a very little bushing. There we go. And it pops off like that. So why don't we put a slide extension on it that replaces the bushing more or less? It's not quite the same, the slide's not quite the same, but we can minimise the number of differences and then we can turn the whole of the end of the slide and we can put some proper sights on it so we've got a longer barrel we've got more accuracy we'll make a longer grip so you've got more control over it and uh, there you go it worked they were happy this pistol sold really really well and uh, excuse me I do have to consult some notes on this because it's quite a long list so Yugoslavia had them the Netherlands had them as the pistol M25 number one and number two depending on whether it's a 32 or a um, or a 9mm short, um, used by the Maratio Soch, the paramilitary sort of border police. Um, the, the army had them, lots of what, police forces had them, until the 70s. I mean, this went on for a long time. Greece had them, Turkey had them, Romania, the French Navy had some pre-World War II. Uh, Denmark had them. Uh, during the war, uh, the Germans took a lot of these into inventory. A lot of them went to the Luftwaffe, and I've seen a collection where... Um, uh, the, the collector had all manner of things Luftwaffe marked, that was uh, quite cool. The idea being that well, the Germans issued quite a surprisingly large number of pistols and the people who didn't really, really need one, they could have something like this, it's adequate. Um, and that meant that more 9mm para pistols such as P38s and uh, P08 Lugers could end up in the front line, the guy's more likely to have to use them. Um, so yeah, the Germans took a lot of these in, both from Belgian production, the, the, the FM factory during the war ha was producing them under occupation. And then post-war, they were used, uh, the French army still had some, the French navy still had some, a lot of police forces, a lot of European police forces in Germany and France had these, had them quite late, and as I said, the Dutch used them until replacing them in the 70s in police service with the Walther P5, which was not exactly a great choice, but there we go. This particular one is uh, ex-Hamburg police, of all things, came with a nice leather holster and uh, spare mag. Now what I find particularly interesting here as a target shooter is 
the ergonomic issue of what's going on here. Now, this, as I said, is a delightful little, nicely pointing uh, pocket pistol. Hardly any sights on it, but it points, it points very, very well, and uh, you could certainly do good work with it. The thing is, it's two finger, two finger grip, your, your pinky's uh, falling off the back. By extending the grip down, it brings your pinky forward and it changes the angle at which you're holding it. This, this is a very, very straight grip. This tends to point a bit low. And whereas a little tiny, tiny little grip like that on a pocket pistol feels okay, I mean, you're not expecting to have a great big hand filling grip there, it's no wider here. It's the, it's the, it's the same width. It's literally, it's just extended downwards. And it's still got a nasty, nasty grip safety on the back. So you've got this really kind of smallish, but not tiny grip with a pistol that's smallish, but it's not tiny sticking out the top. And you've got to squeeze that quite hard, which affects how you hold it. You can't hold this pistol how you want to hold it. You have to hold it how it wants to be held. And then the trigger is still miles back, like on a, like on a pocket pistol, because it's, it's an extended pocket pistol. Now, uh, we like to think that in an ideal situation, with trigger control, you want to put the middle of the first pad on a single action trigger, like that. If you do that here, your finger's sticking right out the side. You've got very little sideways control over it. And in fact, I end up pulling this with the middle of the second pad because it's the only way I can pull the trigger straight back. Now the sights on it are okay. It's adequately accurate. It's nothing to um, to write home about, but it's I find it an interesting piece. The other cool thing is that you can make hybrids between these because there's so much in common to them. Oh, and there's actually also there were some made with a solid slide for target shooting, and I found in a, in a in a gun shop in uh, Arberg, uh, a Dutch military marked one with target sights and a, and a full length solid slide rather than, the, rather than the split one, which is also quite cool. But anyway, back at the plot. So what you can do with these is for instance, if we strip them, and they both strip the same. So uh, first of all, let's, let's just, wait. That annoying bushing off. So that comes off like that. This one, same deal, but easier because you've got more purchase on it. Safety catch halfway into the notch there. Rotate the barrel, safety catch down, and then the whole lot comes off the top. Take the barrel out that way. So this one, the striker was cocked, and you can see that it's the only thing between you and a bang is uh, a very small sear there. It sort of doesn't comply with modern ideas about multiple redundancies on safety here. Because, okay, you might have a magazine safety, you might have uh, the grip safety, but fundamentally, the only thing stopping the striker falling is that there's no, there's no other block in there. So what we can do, for instance, is we can take the long barrel and put it in the short slide. So we can do that. And remembering that these are either 9mm short or uh, 32 ACP, couldn't imagine possibly what you might be able to do on there to put something else on the end of it, possibly a moderator, for instance. Or you can put the uh, small slide on the long frame, which looks a bit ridiculous because it's sort of about the same depth as it is long. But if you like more purchase, even though it sort of reduces its pointability, and I uh, actually did this in a pocket pistol competition where the rules were just on, uh, on, on barrel length. And uh, what was quite interesting was that the point of aim changed. Um, it shot to a different point. And I think that's because the way the barrel attaches to the frame, well, it doesn't really attach. It's just got these lugs that sit in those grooves there. And it just sort of sits there. And if it's not quite in the same alignment, the barrel's not going to be pointing in quite the same place. 
Or finally, long slide on short grip, a bit on the ridiculous side. Anyway, I find these uh, weird and lesser known Euro pop pistols kind of interesting. You may or may not. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to our sponsors, Venturi Munitions, for uh, helping to make this kind of thing possible. Thanks also to our patrons on TFB TV. So if you haven't already, please consider becoming a patron and supporting the channel on Patreon. And uh, like and subscribe and all that. And uh, see you again sometime. Bye.